Let's take a look at another Bodhi plot example. So keep in mind as you're watching these videos, it might be a good idea to pause the videos and try to work certain parts of the problem by yourself and then play the video to check your work. So this example is very similar to the first one where we want to make Bodhi plots for a certain transfer function, which is given here. So just like with the last problem, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is to put this function in standard form. Because again, we look at this and we notice that it's not quite the same form as all of those seven terms that we had defined previously. So now we have items in our numerator and our denominator that we wanna sort of adjust to get into that standard form. So let's start with our denominator. So the j omega by itself is fine, so that's just going to be a pole at the origin. And uh, the next term, our j omega plus five quantity squared is actually going to be a double pole. But we know for that pole, uh, we looked at our simple pole term, and I mentioned briefly that we could generalize that instead of having to the power of one, we have to the power of two here but we still want it to be in the form of one plus j times something in the parentheses. So in order to get that, what we can do is we can factor out a 25, and what we're going to be left with then is one plus j times omega divided by five. And so the reason we had to factor out 25 instead of five is of course because that was squared. So in the numerator, uh, pretty simple, we're just gonna factor out a 10 so we can get this in the form that we saw with our simple zero. So we want one plus j times something. In this case, the something is going to be omega divided by 10. And so this lets us see our corner frequencies a lot more clearly. So now what we want to do is we want to sort of combine these constant terms. We have the 10 in the numerator and the 25 in the denominator. So combining those, what we're going to get is 0.4 times one plus j omega divided by 10. And then in the denominator now we just have our j omega and our one plus j times omega over five squared. So here is our transfer function in standard form. So what we're gonna do is the same thing we did in our last example. We say, all right, here is our constant. Now here we have a simple zero. Down here we have a couple components now. We have a pole at the origin. And we also have a simple pole, um, but because we have the squared, what we would call this is a repeated pole. So we have two poles with the same corner frequency. So what we're gonna do is again, just look at each of these four components separately. And then once we have the Bode plot for each component, we can combine them into our overall, our overall Bode plot for our transfer function. Okay, so let's look at each of those components individually. So let's again start with our simplest one, the constant. And so in this case, our constant we said was 0 0.4. So because we have a positive constant straight away, we know our phase is going to be zero. So let's go ahead and draw that because that's nice and easy to deal with. So our phase, again, let's make this a little larger so it's easy to see. Um, but we're saying our phase is just zero and there's no frequency dependence. And in general, we don't expect to see frequency dependence on either part for our, um, for our constant values. So now we wanna consider our magnitude or our gain. And so in this case, remember we said our magnitude, we get from doing 20 log of k. Well, so k is 0.4. And so since that's less than one, we're gonna get a negative number. So we get negative 7.96 if we calculate that. And we can say, well, let's approximate that it's negative eight just to make our drawings a little easier here. So we can come down here and we can say, let's make this negative eight. So we're just gonna have a constant gain of negative eight associated with this constant. Okay, so that's our constant. Our second term, let's look at the simple zero. So let's Mm, you know, let's go ahead and try to fit this here. 
to make our scrolling a little easier as we're looking at all four together. So our simple zero, and just to repeat that here, we had one plus j times omega divided by 10. And so we have our corner frequency or our 3 dB frequency at omega equals 10. Okay, so what we're gonna do is similar to what we saw when we've worked with our simple zeros before. So for our magnitude in decibels, that's just going to be zero below our corner frequency and it's going to increase at 20 dB per decade above the corner frequency. So I didn't draw that axis very straight, so that should be zero. And then above this corner frequency, which is 10, we have a 20 dB per decade increase. Okay, and this corner frequency here was 10. Now for our phase, for a simple zero, it's going from zero to 90 degrees. So here's our phase as a function of frequency. Our corner frequency is 10. We wanna go one decade below to one and one decade above to 100. And we say at our quarter frequency, we have a phase of 45 degrees. And at one decade above, we're at 90 degrees. So we get something that looks like this. So we have zero until we get to one decade below. Then we're increasing here. And then once we get to 100, we're at 90 degrees and then we're maintaining constant at 90 degrees. So this is a slope of 45 degrees per decade. Okay, so that's our simple zero. So now we wanna look at the pole at the origin. So our pole at the origin, which was just the one over J omega. Uh, I've written it like that because of course the J omega was in the denominator. So again, we can just look at our summary sheet for Bode plots to determine what this should look like. So for our gain, we have magnitude of H and dB, and our key frequencies for this are going to be 1, 10, and 0.1. So 1 and 10, that's our frequencies. And so we had said before that this is going to be zero gain at frequency of one, and then changes of 20 dB, negative 20 dB per decade. So we have 20 up here, minus 20 down here. And so at 0.1, we're at 20 dB, and at, at 10, we're at negative 20. Let's just try to draw a straight line through there. And so of course that continues here and we just have the negative 20 dB per decade slope. Our phase is a little simpler. It's just going to be a constant negative 90 degrees. So here's our phase. And so it's not frequency dependent. It's just constant at negative 90. We get something that looks like that. Okay, so now for our double pole, our repeated pole at a corner frequency of five. So item number four here. So we said we have a double or a repeated pole. And this double pole has a corner frequency of omega equals five. And let me just copy what that looked like. So we had one plus j, clean that up a little bit, one plus j times the quantity of omega divided by five, and then that whole thing was to the negative two. Again, the reason for the negative is because it's in the denominator. So what we do then is if we go to our summary table for our Bode plots, we're sort of in this general case, uh, we don't have a simple pole, but we have this repeated pole and so what we can think of is basically we, have, we are looking at this exponent here, and we see in this case we have n equals two if we're looking at our simple pole equation, or if we keep it even more general, we're just saying some um, polynomial to some power, then our n would be negative two. But I believe how the table is arranged, in this case you're looking at an n equals two. So what that means is instead of a negative 20 dB per decade slope, we now have a negative 40 dB per decade slope. 
And instead of a negative 45 degree per decade uh, decrease in our phase, we now have a negative 90 degree, negative 90 degree per decade uh, decrease. So let's draw that out so we can see what that looks like. So here we have our magnitude in decibels and our corner frequency is five. So let's mark that here. And so the plot structure looks the same at zero as we're below this corner frequency of five. But now instead of a negative 20 dB per decade, we have a negative 40 dB per decade slope. And again, that's because we have this N equals two here. Okay, so let's look at our phase. It's a function of frequency omega. And so at any point, if you have trouble reading what I'm writing, don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, so we're interested in our corner frequency and then one decade below at 0.5, one decade above at 50. And so we know at our corner frequency now, well, so we know our final frequency is going to be two times negative 90, so negative 180. And sort of in the middle of that, we're gonna have two times negative 45, which is negative 90. So below 0.5, it'll be zero. Above 50, it will be negative 180. And between those two, we'll have a linear decrease. So at five, it should be negative 90. And so here we have negative 90 degrees per decade. Okay, so now we have completed our four components of our transfer function. So what we wanna do like we did last time is add all of the terms graphically. Okay, so let's sort of get a plot ready for our our, our gain and our phase. So sort of knowing what's coming, I'm gonna give myself more space on the negative side this time around. And so let's say this is for our gain in decibels. And so let's consider our key frequencies here. So from our double pole, we know that five is going to be a key frequency in our magnitude plot. Uh, we know that our one is going to be sort of a useful point because uh, we know that's where we have zero gain contribution from this pole at the origin. And 10 is another important frequency. We can go ahead and include our 1, 10, 100 and our 0 0.5, 5 and 50 just so we can easily copy that axis down to use for another plot. So let's say we have our 0 0.1 here and then we increase one decade to go to one, increase another decade to go to 10, increase another decade to go to 100. So that should give us, have us covered on that one. Uh, now the other points of interest were 0.5 and decades related to that. So let's say our 0.5 is maybe somewhere here, five would be here and 50 would be here. And again, keep in mind, this frequency is plotted on a logarithmic scale, so that's why uh, things might look a little different here. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy this so we have something ready for our phase plot. Okay, and so as with last time, let's adjust this uh, so we can get a little more room negative. Uh, well, actually this should be fine, so let's just extend this down a little bit maybe in case we need that. And let's get rid of this and change that to phase information. Okay, so let's start by focusing on our magnitude and then we'll come back and we'll deal with our phase in a little bit. So what we wanna do is we wanna look at the contributions from each of our components. So again, just focusing on magnitude, we see that our double pole has no contribution to the magnitude before five, so that's just zero. Our pole at the origin is going to be contributing this, this constant slope of negative 20 dB per decade throughout all frequencies. Our simple zero has no magnitude contribution below 10. And then we have this constant of negative eight that's being added for all frequencies as well. So we're looking at components one and three. So we have this negative eight and this constant slope here. So all that's gonna do is essentially we're shifting this down 
eight. So this pole at the origin plot, we're shifting it down by eight. And so that is going to be true until we get this double pole kicking in at five. And then after that, we're going to have this simple zero kicking in at 10. So let's do that sort of one piece at a time. So up until five, we just have our pole at the origin plot shifted down by eight. So at point one, it was at 20, but shifted down eight means it's going to be at 12. And we know that this is going to continue at this rate until we get to negative five. So let's go ahead and sort of mark that we're gonna be going here. Okay, so, and we're going to be going at negative 20 dB per decade, starting from this point here, which is at 12 dB and one, one, uh, point one in our frequency. And so we're going all the way down till five. And so we're gonna be a little bit over. Um, so we know at one, we would be at negative, um, negative eight. So let me come here and write this. So let's say this is negative eight. And so the reason I know that's negative eight is because when we go one decade, we should have decreased 20. So that's what we have there. And we're gonna keep doing that, that same rate until we get to five actually. So here is where that other one cuts in. So let me come back to this and label this as negative 20 dB per decade from our pole at the origin. So now once we get to five, we have another negative 40 dB per decade that's cutting in. And so that's going to continue until we get to 10. So between five and 10, we have the negative 20 dB from our pole at the origin, as well as the negative 40 from our double pole. So that's going to add together to give us a negative 60 dB decrease. And so again, that's going to go until we get to 10. So let's sort of draw a dashed line here. And so this is going to start decreasing a lot more rapidly. So we get something that looks like that. And so again, this is negative 60 dB per decade. Okay, so then beyond 10, we have this simple zero kicking in. So now we have that negative 60 dB, which we had before, plus our 20 dB per decade. And so that's true for 10 onwards. So after 10, none of these four magnitude components changing. So we're going to have negative 60 plus 20 is going to give us a negative 40 dB per decade. So we're still decreasing uh, not quite as rapidly as we were between 5 and 10, but more rapidly than we were before 5. So this is going to be negative 40 dB per decade. Okay, so that is what our gain would look like. So now let's look at our phase plot. So let's look at our, our contributions here. So we see this double pole is going to sort of be the, the trickier one to incorporate because we have uh, this slope of negative 90 degrees per decade between 0.5 and 50. Our pole at the origin is easy. It just has negative 90 for all frequency. Our constant is easy. It just has zero contribution for all frequency. And then our simple zero uh, we have this positive 45 degree decade slope between one and 100. So what we can see is between zero and 0.5, the only contribution is coming from the pole at the origin. So we have negative 90. So between zero and 0.5, we're going to be at negative 90. So let me go ahead and label some other frequencies. So let's go ahead and label our negative 180 as well. So until we get here, we're just going to be staying constant at negative 90 degrees. Now at 0.5, we have our double pole kicking in. So we're gonna have negative 90 degrees per decade. So that's active between 0.5 and 50, but we're gonna have the zero kicking in sometime in between that. So that kicks in at one and stays on until 100. So what that means is between 0.5 and one, so the 0.5 from here and the one, so while the double pole is kicked in, but before the zero has kicked in, we'll have negative 90 degrees per decade. 
So let me attempt to sketch that accurately here. So let's draw sort of a dashed line here to help us. And we're saying between 0.5 and 1, and so that kind of got lost with my dashed line, but this is 1. We're saying we have a negative 90 degree per decade. So that's negative 90 degrees per decade from that double pole. Okay, so that continues. So between, or sorry, so, so after, after 1, we have this simple zero kicking in. So at that point, we have contributions from our simple zero and our simple pole. So we have 45 degrees from our simple zero, negative 90 degrees per decade from our double pole. So the net is going to be a negative 45 degrees per decade. So that is going to continue until we reach 50, because once we get to 50, this double pole is going to sort of cut off or it's going to reach a stable state. So between 1 and 50, so let's go ahead and mark that over here, we're going to have a slope of negative 45 degrees per decade. So something that maybe looks like that. So this is negative 45 degrees per decade. Okay, so once we have reached negative 50, however, uh, this double pole has cut off, so it's reached sort of a steady state at negative 180 contribution. Our simple zero is still increasing at 45 degrees per decade, however, and that's going to continue until we get to 100. So now we only have this 45 degree per decade increase until we get to 100. So coming back down here, we can say until we get to 100, do that in black, so some dashed lines here. So until we get to 100, we are increasing at 45 degrees per decade. So that's only the contribution from that simple zero uh, that's sort of driving that change. And so uh, once we are reach 100, we should be at our final frequency. And so our final frequency is gonna be the sum of all of these for large omega. So our constant is still just contributing zero. Our simple zero is contributing positive 90. Our pole is contributing negative 90, so those two cancel out. And then our double pole is contributing negative 180. So our final value should be at negative 180. And so we see I've drawn this kind of poorly, um, but let me just kind of cheat and come over here and say, let's make our negative 180 um, down here instead. Um, so that final value should be at negative 180. So hopefully now you're a little more comfortable with being able to make Bode plots. Something else that you're gonna get some practice with in the homework and that you will be responsible for being able to do on the test is to look at a Bode plot, so magnitude and phase information as we see here, and be able to determine what the transfer function is.